Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is part 21 of my turn-based battle system tutorial. In the last part we were creating that small town prefab. So um, in this tutorial part we will create a small world. So we have several regions, we can encounter different enemies. And of course I want to create a small hero character basically, or a hero yeah, figure which we can and navigate easily to the or through the sound at first and later on uh, we will go over in the next tutorial I believe we will go over and switch stay to all that colliders and stuff so let's get started and first we're gonna go over and create a new scene this one needs to be blank of course so what I want to do is I, first I want to create a 3d object which is going to be a plane. So this plane will represent the ground of our world. You can use later on terrains and all the other things. I just go over and cover the basics, nothing else. So this terrain I, uh, or this plane, I will make sure that is um, big enough. I don't need uh, the y-axis in this case. So I have enough space basically to work around with. So what I want to do at first is since I have created a prefab out of my town, I want to place this one somewhere in my world. So I can make sure that this is rememberable basically of the, or for the player. The player knows, okay, there was this town and it looked like that. So I can maybe create something small out of this. So what I do is I drag this one into place. As you can see right now, it's just the town we created and I can drag this right now to any position in my world basically, wherever I want. I just need to make sure that is on the y-axis on zero. Since we had that small prefab, uh, that small game object and added the, all the elements to that, it's automatically zeroed out. If you have done everything correctly, it should look like that somehow. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a collider around that small town, so it's going to be a box collider. And with that collider selected, you can see it's just too small for the town. So I need to um, yeah, increase the size, and as we know, our first plane was or is 10 by 10, including the, the outlines, basically, we have a 12 by 12. So what we do is we select that small part in here, the center can stay the same at the moment and what I do is I increase the size to 12 in the x and in the z axis. So now it should fit our complete town. It could also be that it is a one unit too big in the z axis. We will see that in just a second. Also in the height or in the y axis I want to make sure that it is at least 6. Now the center, since we the center point of that is going to be the town's game object, which is in the middle, we need to up this one uh, with the half of the y-axis. So now you can see um, we surrounded the whole area around our town. It seems it's not 100%, so I wasn't too accurate when I was creating this one, so I might be able to fix something in here and there well basically I don't but it doesn't matter you can always go in and fix all that collider stuff um, as you need or as you please also the most important one is we need to get rid of all colliders and all that so we don't have any problems later on so at least disable all of them or just get rid of them by deleting all of this so we don't have any weird problems later on and we are not colliding with anything but the outer collider I just created. So make sure you disable every collider in this one. But do not save this one in the prefab since we are not going to override the prefab because the town needs to stay the same. Also we are able to put it up a slightly bit so the ground will not be that uh, problematic with, this, with the other underground in there. So it's slightly a bit higher than that. Okay, so now we have placed the town in our world somewhere. So the rest of the area in here can be any region where we can encounter enemies. We could create a forest in my case. Maybe where we have forest monsters and we could have, I don't know, everything we want. Grassland. Well, everything texture-wise or 3D model-wise. 
I don't go over and model anything as I don't like to do since it would take too long time for me. So I go into the top mode and now it's going to be isometric and I have also the possibility to change to perspective. I need to be in isometric mode so it's easier to handle around all yeah, everything we create in the next seconds. So what I want to create right now is I collapse the town for the second. Uh, a new 3D object in this case is going to be a cube. This cube again I'm gonna reset its position and set the Y position to plus 0 0.5. Also I want to color this one so I can see it one better. Well actually just for the moment and I just uh, drag the color onto the cube. As you can see it's red now since we already have red in our colors or in our color selection. Now I can scale this one up and down to any of my needs. This box or this yeah quad or call it whatever you want will represent later on an, a region where we can encounter enemies. So let's say in this corner in here would be a forest or maybe make it a bit bigger so we don't need too much uh, different regions for this. So this could be later on a forest region and in this region will be only forest monsters. We will later on code wise uh, change everything so we know okay there are going to be only those particular monsters we are able to encounter. Also I'm gonna duplicate this one or at first rename it to maybe encounter region 1. So later on we know, okay, this is the encounter region 1 and in region 1 we only have two different monsters or I don't know. Now we can duplicate this one once again. We can keep the name for now, scale this down a bit and we can basically change everything to our needs. I just can get rid of everything I want or I can increase and decrease the size to my needs again. Okay, so this is also going to be the same region, so we can do that or create them together. Also, you have later on or at any time the possibility to model your own zones. That means you're gonna go into Maya, Blender or 3ds Max, Cinema 4D and all that 3D modeling programs and create your own zone. You just uh, model it however you want that and then you can use a mesh collider for this. This is the only thing we are later on just taking care of that we are using the mesh colliders uh, for that encounter regions. In this part or in this case I just have the box colliders on it that's pretty much what I, we need in this case. Okay so now you know how you can easily create regions in which we have monster encounters, boss encounters, whatever you please and whatever you want. So plan ahead and see how your world could later on look like. Make sure that you have a small gap in between regions. If you have bigger regions we can or you can later on yeah, make sure that the gaps are a bit bigger or smaller. But make sure there is a gap so the colliders later on don't have problems to know who is going to be the next one or the next region. We will go over into that later on anyways or again. Okay so now I have two regions in here. What I also need is when I enter that town by hitting the town collider or the box collider I just hit it, I also need a spawn point when I come back from the town. So what I can do is I can just take one of those blue drops or cylinders, duplicate that and place this outside of the town. So now you can see this is the next spawn point and I can call this one not the world spawn point but town spawn point for example. Again a naming convention later on is really important and we will go over that in the next tutorial series parts basically. So don't worry. Okay so now we have a small map done where we can move around later on with our character again you can use everything you want you can use terrains you can use to to make your scene or your world as nice as possible for the best user experience also i might go over and drag the camera a bit um, up or i don't know and give it a rotation of maybe 25 degrees or something like that 
also I can uh, when you have selected global you can use it as a direct up and down arrows otherwise the local axis is up working a bit different okay so with that set up I'm gonna save my scene so save scene as uh, go into the scenes folder and just name this one world map so everything in here can be in the world map later on you will also have some dungeon maps and I don't know a cave maps um, since we are using the scene switching uh, between everything so when we hit the collider of the town we will enter the town then we get into the um, into the um, into the town scene of whatever town we have just hit it or we're hitting and then we can navigate into the town itself okay now opening up uh, the other scene which is town one in my case double click that and what I want to make sure is right now is that I can navigate through that town without any problems. So what does it mean is at first I create a new cube which will be my hero character. So I'm gonna right click 3D object cube and this cube can be uh, we, we need to reset its position at first. Again we set its Y axis to 0.5 once again so it won't stick into the ground and also we can place this maybe directly here on the spawn point itself. What we need is now a movement script, so we can use uh, WASD to navigate around the scene, but we also don't want to make sh or we want to make sure that we don't have any weird collisions. I'm gonna show you what I mean in just a second. At first, what we need to do is we need to create or add a component called rigid body. So this rigid body will make sure that we can, if we would like to, use gravity. I don't want to, so I disable that one in the rigid body component. And of course I later on want to make sure that I can collide with all the buildings, but not with those spawn uh, doors or whatever we have called them. Yeah, the doors. So those need to be triggered, so we don't collide them with them. Later on those uh, mesh renderer components will be disabled so we don't see them but the houses doors will be visible so we can yeah easily trigger all of that stuff same for those blue um, cylinders which will be our spawn points when we are leaving a house basically or leaving a s or any spot it doesn't really matter and uh, this will represent basically a spawn point and nothing else so those don't need any box colliders or cylinder colliders or capsule colliders uh, yeah Okay, so this is going to be my hero character. So I just call this one hero character. It wouldn't basically do much at the moment, just moving around and maybe later on with uh, to do some interactions with um, NPCs and so on. But I don't go over and cover this one. You may want to check other videos about that. So this is going to be my hero character, which I want to move around the town. I could could always go in and yeah make it nicer smaller i don't know or model my own also i only will do horizontal and vertical uh, movement and nothing else so there will be no rotation no camera movement no nothing just to make sure that i have something to react to so when you move around with your character through the town you of course will make sure that it is rotating in the right direction and so on and so forth and same with the uh, different movement possibilities like uh, selecting the uh, a mouse position and walk to that or just as I do right now or in just a second with the WASD keys. Okay, so let's create a movement script for our hero character. So what we can do is we can go and navigate to our scripts folder at first and create a new c -sharp script and call this one hero movement. This hero movement will later on do the movement inside a town and outside a town, so respectively on the world map. Let's open this one up with Mono Develop or Visual Studio, depending on what you need and like and use. And let's start to move that character. At first, basically, we don't need to uh, start an update at the moment, so I could delete them, but maybe later on we need those, so I just leave them alone for the moment. What I want to do uh, is at first to create a float value which uh, will be our movement speed so I call this one just move speed and set this one to maybe 10f so 
everything needs to move uh, with a different speed. So this is a val variable we need. Instead of update, we're gonna go over and use fixed update since it's not that heavy basically. And that's going to be fixed with a big F. Gonna zoom in a bit so you see this one better. So it's called fixed update. Uh, as you see or saw, I just got rid of update at the moment. Later on, you, we can enter update if we need it um, anyways. So what we want to do is in fixed update, we create two new variables. The first one is going to be the X axis. So we say just move X. And move X is going to be equal to input dot get axis. Get axis is automatically set by Unity to uh, several different keys. And what we want to move here is the horizontal axis. Horizontal. Make sure you type everything right. In the next line, which is going to be uh, for the up and down movement, or basically the z-axis movement, we create another float, and this float is going to be called move z. Since it is a bit different in Unity, the z-axis is not going to be the up and down, uh, which is basically the forward and backward axis. Uh, so that's different to uh, 3D modeling. Uh, programs, for example. That's why a lot of people have problems in there. Okay, so what we do is again we say input.get axis. In this, uh, in this case, it's going to be the vertical axis. Vertical. So we can now use those input variables and translate them into new or into movement. And what we do is we create a new vector 3 for this. And I call this one movement, and nothing else. And the movement is going to be equal to a new vector three. Oops, a new vector three. And then here we can put in all the variables we just have. So the first one is going to be move x. Then we'll say comma. Then it's going to be zero f or zero point zero f. It doesn't really matter. It's about the or it's the same. And after that. Or we can just type in zero. The last one is going to be move z. Like this. And there we go. And the last one is going to be we will change the velocity of our rigid body component. Again, there are several possibilities to move a character around. I just use this one. It doesn't really matter. So we say get component. And what we want, we want the rigid body component. This one. And after we got that, we want the velocity of that rigid body component, and we want to set the velocity to the movement we just created, which is the vector 3. And we say times move speed. Also, it could happen that since it ha has no real time um, calculation, we should maybe also calculate or set this one by time or times time dot delta time. So every um, single, I don't know, device which is using that should work the same and has the same speed in the moving itself. It could happen that is a 10F is going to be too fast right now. So we might change it later on. Um, yeah. While not writing every, uh, anything in front, like public, for example, the float will be private as long as I don't say this is going to be a public one. Don't forget to save that. And now I drag the script we just created, the hero movement script, onto my hero character. And now let's see what's happening. Again, it might be too fast or whatever. And with the W A S D O S, you can see it's pretty slow. So we have to increase the movement speed or the move speed in here. I'm gonna set this one to 100. This happens because of time to delta time and the size maybe of the map. I don't know. Okay, it's a bit faster. Let's get rid of time to delta time for a second. So I'm gonna command this one out and set this one back to 10. Maybe later on we will increment all of that or implement that once again. So for now and for the testing issues, 
and we just take it as it is. So now you can see with 10F it's going to be, yeah, pretty cool walking around. It also collides with the walls and the houses, but as you can see, I can do some weird stuff in here and also the cube is rotating. So what we can do is we can go to the rigid body component itself and go to constraints. So open this one up and what we can do is we can freeze every possible rotation on our cube. Um, again, this is only for prototyping. You may want to use any other possibility to move your hero once, uh, yeah, around basically. And you may want to use gravity and all the other things. So this is just a basic example how you can move anything around pretty quick. So now I can collide with the walls, but I don't go and rotate uh, weirdly around. I just bounce a, li a little bit and that's pretty much it. Okay, so since we can now move around, we can go over later on in the next chapter, basically, to switch around the scenes and, yeah, do everything what we need to uh, do there. But I want to cover one more thing. Don't forget to save your scene in here with your hero character in. What we want to create is a new empty game object, and this is going to be called game manager. We need a manager game object which can handle everything in between scenes and later on we need to make sure that the game manager is a persistent game uh, a, a persistent game object between the scenes. And how can we make this one persistent is pretty easy. We're gonna write a new script for this of course. So we say create new C sharp script and we call this one just game manager. Later on, Game Manager can handle everything since it's going to get a kind of static yeah, game object. And we can also already drag the Game Manager script onto the Game Manager object. So the naming convention in here doesn't matter. It's just for us to know this is going to be the part of that. Now open this one up. And now, since we want to make sure that the game manager is going to be a static game object and will be persistent in every scene and will not be destroyed when we are loading another scene like uh, between the town and the world, we just say this is going to be a uh, public static. So it's static for everything around. Um, and what we do is. Uh, it is going to be a public static game manager. So it's static for itself and we can call this one whatever we want. In this case, we can call this one just instance or anything else. Instead of start, we're gonna use awake since awake is faster than start with a big A in the beginning, of course. And in awake, we want to check several things. We want to check if this is the instance is already existing or not. And then we decide what we want to do and how we want to react to maybe another game manager instance we have in our game. So at first, I'm gonna command this one out. We want to check if the instance exists. So instance exists. You can make your own uh, some notes in there so you know later on what's going to on in here. So if instance is going to be equal or equal equal in this case to to null so if it's not existing then we want to set this uh, the the instance to be this game object so we say instance is going to be equal to this i hope you got it okay so if no instance basically exists of the type game manager object or game editor manager script in the scene somewhere i don't know it doesn't really matter if it's not so if not set the instance set instance to this uh basically to this game object okay so if it's not the case so else if so if it is already existing but it's not whoops again else if uh, instance is not equal this so if it is existing but is not this instance of a game object 
So if it exists, but is not this instance. So it is basically another instance which we have uh, created and already dragged into every scene we need to make sure we can later on load from this particular instance and we want to make sure that we destroy it. So we say destroy game object. Okay, so this will make sure that we don't have a duplicate game manager object in the whole game or in, in particular loaded scene. We only need that game manager or we will need that game manager later on for uh, several different things. So we want to make sure that this persists through every scene we are going to create and we are going through and we load and, and all the other things. And after all that, after we know, okay, that we only have one one uh, game object basically, which is that particular instance of this game object, we want to set this game object to be not destroyable. So, uh, and how we do that? There's a function for this Unity provides already, and it's called don't destroy on load. So we don't destroy this particular game object when we are loading a new scene or reloading the same scene. This game object will be persistent. So we can easily switch later on between uh, scenes and this game manager object with that script attached to it will always follow up. So we can get rid for now of update and may later on yeah, get this one in once again, but well, at least for now we are done. So what we have right now is a, a, a game manager object which will be persistent through every scene. Also, in every like in the battle, for example, we can uh, paste a duplication of that or a, a prefab out of this. I'm gonna create one, which should be pretty quick, and also create a hero character for this. Later on, we will sort out all the other things. So this particular game manager object can now be used in every scene and when we have to load something the game manager object will hold all the information like are we in town or are we in a world? Are we in the woods or whatever or what was the last house we were visiting for example or the the last Collider basically we were hitting what was the last region we were in to encounter specific enemies depending on where we have saved um, Every data also game manager will later on make sure that we load the correct data Like what heroes do we have already what monsters? I don't know what quests we have all of that information can be stored in the game manager object and yeah that's what we have done for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. And there's something new I want to mention is you can now join me or basically be my Patreon. So you can be uh, a supporter of me and my channel if you like my work and my free tutorials I provide. I will yeah, send all the links in the description below. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel if you want to or if you like to to see more videos in the future. And don't forget to thumbs the video up if you... yeah if you found this helpful in any way. So, see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.